Hey everybody, Texas Stroker here, Lance's Performance Shop, LowlandStarMopars.com. It is Friday night, 7.47, and if we can get that, there we go, 99 degrees. That's right, it's cooled off. <laughs> uh, taking advantage of the reprise from the heat, but uh, nice, cool 99. I say that because we're going to be like 105, 109 this weekend, so hey, you know, you get off work at 7 and you get home and you cash in on it when it drops below triple digits. Uh, short and sweet and to the point here, I've got something that I couldn't find anything on. No videos, no nothing. There was a couple of reviews here and there, and the problem is this is a product that does two things, and virtually everyone was using it to do the one more common thing. So, what we have is from Summit Racing. I'll have a link down below. I make nothing off of that. Uh, just FYI, I also have timestamps. So if you're like, man, just open the box, or geez, idiot, just you know, show me if the thing works or not. Timestamps, they're your friends. I don't care if you skip around. It's uh, bad for the channel, bad for the algorithm, all that, you know, back end stuff. Quite frankly, I just hope the video benefits you. So, this could be a total, total crapshoot. It could work. It could be the wonder product I've been looking for. It could be junk in a paperweight. Uh, it would be a decent paperweight. It's got some heft to it. And uh, I've got the Hazette in the. Uh, I'm stuck. <laughs> That's that and the uh, Cutex over at the other workbench. So we're just going to roll with this. What I have here is from Lyle and it is their part number 32,000. And you're like, hmm, Lyle 32,000? That doesn't ring a bell. Well, it probably doesn't because it's a pipe shaper. <laughs> and, uh, like I said, no videos on this thing. Uh, a lot of times, you know, like when I'm in this situation where it's something that I would never own on my own of my own free will, and I'm uh, like, man, I wonder if that thing even works. <laughs> it's a deal where I, I check the internet, just like many of you. And uh, there was nothing. You rarely see that. You know, everyone's gotten opinions. People get stuff sent out by this manufacturers, suppliers. Uh, people get in stupid situations like me and have to buy stuff. Couldn't find anything on this. So we're in it for a treat. And if this thing sucks and doesn't do what I want it to do, well... Unlike me, you'll have an extra $33 in your pocket. So, <laughs> if you're thinking, what is this stupid thing? It's in some protective net, isn't it? Well, that is correct. Uh, so you get a cone with pantyhose. I guess that's a one, <laughs> one bonus if it's total junk. But, uh, directions for using the pipe-in shaper. To round out pipes that are crushed or been in. Let's break the video down here. Why am I buying this? I've got headers for the truck. They're pace setter long tubes. They use slip fit, lap joints, whatever you want to call them, swaged on one side. So this, in theory, should be three inches. This is a three inch pipe, but it's been swaged. It's had a pipe expander in it, right? So it slides over and you can put it together and pull it apart and just play with it and mock up your fitment and everything before you clamp it down, weld it, V-band it, whatever you're gonna do. So it's a great, great setup. You know, you don't have to weld it if you just want to slip everything over and use, you know, the cheapest clamps imaginable. You can do that. If you want to spend a little more on nicer clamps, you can. If you want to cut it off and V-band it, you can do that. But it works great everywhere in the system except on one collector. And if you're thinking like, oh, well, you've got one that's crushed in from, you know, freight damage or, you know, the UPS man, you know, bench pressed it, you know, 18 feet onto your sidewalk, right? No, uh, the box did have some dings and bruises, but this collector is not dented in. You know, typically, you know, if you would have an issue, if this is a three inch diameter, you know, like UPS does that. And you've got three inches, you know, here, but you know, here it's like 2.78. And that's not good. You have to beat it back out. That's what you're going to do a lot of times with the pipe expanders, kind of restore the pipe to its original dimensions. Uh, this would sort of be designed for that, and it's why it's listed number one. That is going to be what the vast majority of people are doing, because it's going to be the most common thing. So, knowing that, number one, to round out pipes that are crushed or bent in, insert the point of cone in the pipe. So you've got the big end, the flat end, the, the road side, and then you've got the one looking at the sky. That's the one that you would just hit in. Um, tap it with a hammer to expand the pipe to the original size cool, right? That's going to benefit a lot of people. That very well could be the saving grace for this tool if it doesn't do what I need it to do, because eventually I will have to get things back into shape, right? That's uh, so hopefully not something you have to do frequently, but if you work with, you know, pre-made exhaust kits or you're fabbing your own stuff, it's just something you're going to have to do. And this will have me covered, so that's one bright point. But number two, I fall in this like 1% here, like the poor unfortunate souls, and you question like, whoever has that problem? Well, I do. 
<laughs> and, uh, if you're here, there's a good chance you might as well. So number two, to reshape pipes that are bent or flared out. Uh, that's what we would have here. Place the big end of the cone over the pipe and tap with a hammer. It is recommended that eye protection be worn to prevent personal injury. So let's take a look at this thing, shall we? Uh, it's kind of like a megaphone, if you will, an ice cream cone, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so if I can hold it with my hand, I've last, I don't know, two and a half days, I probably by hand, mind you, uh, moved about 8,500 pounds of castings. Uh, raw castings, brass, cast iron, <laughs> you name it. Uh, and so if you're sitting here and this looks like a dreidel or you know, like a top or you know the ball in the cup, you know, like industrial edition. Nope, this is the pipe shaper. <laughs> so uh, it is coated. This is not the smoothest finish. Uh, the one thing you see in reviews is people complained about that. They came in, you know, like polished it down, so on and so forth. Right here, uh, this would be for the number one crowd, right? So I've got this three inch pipe, but it's, you know, 2.9 because this side's crushed in. So I situate this, we come in over here, give her a few love taps, and you start bushing it out, right? I guess if you keep driving it in, you could conceivably expand that pipe. I'm not sure how well this extracts. <laughs> I would think the cone and the taper effect ah, Nile virus time, I tell you. The government just never stops trying to kill you. <laughs> But uh, I hear the stupid mosquito, and then I caught him right there on my forearm. So uh, anyway, like I was saying, you know, I would think the taper should help you extract it, but you know, be leery of it. Maybe proceed cautiously. This, however, is for the number two camp, right? I'm going to take this thing, I'm going to flip it like this, and I'm going to put it over my three-inch pipe. Like this is what should be a three-inch pipe looking at you just pretend that i'm connected here all right and this should be three but there's like a high spot of crown which just happens to line up with where an o2 bung was welded i don't know maybe heat does something like expand the metal but a novel concept i know so if i'm sitting here and i'm three inches but i've got the high spot where it's like 310 or 305 or something i should be able to wedge this over start tapping and compress it the problem is this is also tapered this is not like the three inch cone. They sell one of these that works for, I don't remember the specs, but a small size to a big size, maybe three inch. So it's not like there's the three inch version, the two and a half, the two and three quarter, the two inch, you know, the, the one and a half or three quarter inch, you know, for fabrication guys. It's like, this is the one size does it all. <laughs> and, uh, that's a little concerning because again like i don't want to collapse the thing i guess if we do we could conceivably play with this in and get more bang for our buck while also wasting time but ultimately i've just got to get it over there and see if it's going to happen for me so once again my big end you know the 3.5 the three inch that's swaged slip fits over everything in that kit i can go to the other header collector and it slides over beautifully but when i come to this particular collector it's just not happening this is the same and slightly bigger than the swaged in so we have a point of conflict that we cannot overcome i know what you're thinking you're like man you should just tap that out well, i've tried i came in i start you know approach with caution you know machinist mindset you know you can always you know trim it again uh, but you, you hit that mark and go over and you got problems. So, uh, come in with a light hammer and light taps, not really getting where I need to go. Just step the hammer size up, step the strength up, go to the bigger hammer again, uh, bust it out, you know, like my body hammers. And then I'm to the point where it's like the little three pound sledge is going to have to come out and I know I can waffle it. I know I can knock it down. I just want to maintain concentricity, concentricity as much as possible i need it to stay around if you will because again my end goal is i want to v-band weld it around this thing so yeah i could come in and just beat the ever-living snot out of it dimple it possibly bush this out work that back and then slide back over and create a working connection however you know i don't want gaps here you know i don't want to have to sit there and it's like well you know this fits over fine now and you've got like you know the c <laughs> on this side uh, you got like a puddle over here a lake on this side and then this is a sea we don't want that we want to maintain you know as much of a concentric circle as possible so 
All I know to do is trial by error, folks. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take this thing. I'm going to shove it onto uh, the out of round collector. It's not much out of round, but just enough to be a problem. And we're just going to see what happens. So uh, I'll run you over there. We'll set the camera up and uh, keep your fingers crossed because I would really like for this to be functional. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to kill this mosquito. It's, uh, it's gotten me twice now. So uh, let's jump over there to the collector. Uh, drop a few more uh, beads of sweat and see what we can't accomplish. All right, so I'm going to try to stay out of the frame here for us, but I kind of want to highlight what we are working with. My apologies on the fan noise. It's just stupid hot. So this is the driver's side header. That is the collector where I kind of got some of the paint scuffed off, right? If I come in down here and we grab a V-band, that's going to be three inch. A slider over. I mean, that's beautiful, right? It just slip fits. So this is not the pipe that would go on the driver's side, but it's important I showcase it to you. This is a straight three inch end and the gloved hand. Open hand up here, we've got the three inch end that has been swayed. You can see it's expanded right there and my thumb's gliding along. That collar, that's what is going to slip fit. So we come in, we line everything up. And we've got our two inches that couples beautifully. So everything is great on the front, aside from everything we're knocking over. <laughs> but that's how this whole system works. So all these pieces you see in the floor, regardless of where they're supposed to go, I can take any expanded end and any closed end and it all just goes together beautifully. We run into an issue when we take a gander at the passenger side. So let me flip you around over here so you can kind of see what I'm working with. All right, so once again, you're probably directly hit by the fan. Like I said, it is, it's hot, so bear with me here. Uh, also, a shout out to Ernst. I got these last night, got home from work really late, but those were in the mailbox. They're the magnetic, <laughs> that's right, uh, magnetic rails. As you can see, no sockets, but they work really well to hold this header up for me. So no hands, that's all on the Ernst socket rails. So. Uh, same setup right here. This is the passenger side. You can tell I've got the O2 sensor. I had to th chase the threads on that. Minor complaint. Got a plug in it. This one's been worked a little bit more. I've sanded all the paint off and hoped that like a couple thousands would magically appear. I've, on a hope and a whim, come in with this guy. Little lap joint. This would be one of the upgraded clamps I talked to you about. So you can see, this would be your straight three inch in and this would be your expanded three inch in. Super Super nice if you just want to do, you know, lap joints or something like that. Uh, none of that has turned out. I just keep it compressed and I think, yeah, we're going to force it down. You know, we take the paint off and we'll just crush its soul into, into compliance. Hasn't worked for me. So when I come in, we'll just grab the uh, V-band since it's a little easier to showcase. But this is the same thing that we slid over uh, on that side. And if I come in, you'll kind of see... I just, I can't make it happen. I can get it, you know, about, I think you can sort of see where you can actually find the edge of the pipe here versus the V-Bend. I'd say you can get it to about, well, after hammering for a long time, I'm probably 90, 95% not occluded, but I've got this area over here that'd be the high spot. It's what we need to knock down. In fact, you can kind of see it a little out around there. If we step back, or I just step up for you, the high spot is essentially right here. And if you think, well, man, just hit it with your hammer. I have been, and like I said, I'm to the point, I'm just gonna have to like waffle it if this doesn't work and then build it back out. But if you think, well, why on earth would it be perfectly round except for here, what's different than that side? See where I have that plug? That's again, your O2 port. And if you go to the part that is not cooperating the high zone if you will it's right here literally in line with where they would have done the weld for the o2 sensor bung so i'm not a rocket science i'm not a licensed detective but i do have a little bit of common sense and i'm gonna go out on a limb and say she got warped so uh what i'm gonna do now this is sort of an awkward angle let me see if i can back out a bit uh, i'm gonna grab this one and this is what I was sliding over. This actually is the pipe that should go here. Same thing. You can just see it's not. like <laughs> It's close, but this is more of like a butt connection than a slip fit. And that's not what we're after. Certainly not what we want. So, this is where we're at. 
this guy right here that we just bought for $33. 90% of people are gonna stuff it in this and whatever dings that happened in freight or from the factory, you just I guess, start tapping. You want it square as you can, of course, but you'll just sort of bush your pipe back out. I'm not in that crowd. I'm the number two on that list. Uh, we are going to take the megaphone end, if you will, stick it down, and it's almost like a reaming effect, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, again, I have never used this tool. I have no real <laughs> understanding of, you know, like, do I need to be perfectly centered? Do I want to be offset a bit uh, to where we would, you know, have our high spot? Do we need to do the opposite of that? So what I'm gonna do, this is about the best I can get you, and you probably already have the fan going, and uh, I'm just gonna take this hammer, that's not my choice for this project, but it's what, I have a couple here, so it's what we're gonna roll with. And we're just gonna do a few love taps. And I can tell she's going down, and the trick is I'm like really, really close to where we need to be. <laughs> so, uh, we're gonna candy corn it. Looks like, as you can see there, there's something else. The few reviews on this thing did mention you, like, once you start using this, like, the paint just flies. I think that's probably why a lot of people just took the coating off. That doesn't look radically better, but it does look slightly less out around. So, the, again, especially for video purpose, easiest thing for me is to use the V-band. And... It's still not quite there. Again, this is sort of hard to film as a one-man show, but it's just this high spot here. So what I'm gonna do, you have the general idea of what I'll be doing behind the scenes. I'm probably gonna go get the sledge just because I think it'll save me a bit of time. I'll do a couple of hits with it, and then I'm gonna proceed more slowly and see if I can just kind of get this back into shape. It's super, super close. Again, I can't stress that enough. Like this is a, I guess the best, <laughs> version of the problem to have if you're gonna have it but we've just got to see if we can get this rounded out so we can slip fit everything like we should so we can mock this up and determine our cut points for the v-band so i'm gonna work on this i promise i'll show you what progress we make if any because there's a chance this doesn't work at all all right so it's the next night uh it's 112 today it's 11 p.m right now it's 88 to give you any idea but uh anyway once more this is the driver's side this is a clean fresh v-band and as you can see, slides on like a dream. I have spent a lot of time with our little friend here, and I can tell you right now it was not the miracle worker that I had hoped it would be, but it did help me and I will tell you how. So again, what our plan was, you can kind of see all the, let me just come up here, flip this around where I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> and, uh, you can sort of see all of the action that we have there so this thing you know a lot of the the few reviews you saw just said how people said how rough it was it's not near as rough as i would think it would be after reading reviews like that it could definitely be improved and smoothed out uh, the thing is this is pretty much as you can see where the three inch pipe would nest <laughs> and then this is of course where i spent a lot of time hammering and then this almost like the reaming effect is where i was in i was hoping that it would just crush the pipe down and everything would slide on beautifully that didn't happen um they do both come in handy uh, from time to time but what i can tell you that i did wasn't necessarily you know put this in place and pound on it or you know stuff this down and pound here although we did do that what really worked wonders for me was just being able to take this cone and put it inside the three inch exhaust and let's say that it stops right here okay i would then with my spare hand pull this out a little bit and create like a gap you can kind of see the uh, airspace sort of where my <laughs> fingers popping up right that little airspace that I would create by sort of holding this out or tilting it back just a little bit I would then come in and we just went to the three pound sledge you can kind of see it down there and what that allowed me to do was kind of crush the pipe while sort of having this in place to keep it from collapsing uh, if I would just come in and just beat the ever-loving snot out of it like I was doing with that, we would just collapse the pipe, you'd spend hours building it back out, and then you have to see if you're even remotely close. Using this, which that's not an intended use, uh, at least that they advertised, 
uh, that came in really handy. Now the downside here, that I can tell you, aside from it not being the miracle worker, is the paint on this thing, as you can see, comes off pretty much anywhere the pipe was and anywhere that I was making contact with it with a hammer. And that crud flies. I was doing this on my hands and knees. I was down there on a door kneeling pad. I uh, finally got cardboard for the headers. And the f ground, like, you know, I work in a machine shop, you know, so I'm used to, like, skating over cast iron. Uh, the paint just kind of powderizes. And that's almost what you have on the floor. So uh, for everyone that said they just kind of took this and smoothed it out, I can definitely see that being a benefit not only for just the sake of having a nice smooth surface uh, for your reshaping, but also so you don't have to deal with the paint. Just get the paint off from the get-go. I don't know, you could hit this with like some uh, oil or something, you know, to kind of keep it from rusting if that's a concern for you. But uh, it is what it is, and it did come in handy. Let me spin you now this direction. <laughs> the headers standing up are not the ones sitting down. Again, this is the passenger side that you're looking at now, and that's evidenced by the uh, plug that we put in the OT sensor. So, the V-band on this one, just the driver's side, I mean, it just slides on like a dream, right? This one right here does not, but I can get it into position, and I'm basically at a point now where this is seated entirely around this. I can come in with that little halter mallet down there and flush this thing up. Uh, the guy that I'm going to have TIG welded, I've shot something off to him to see if he's okay with that. I don't know why he wouldn't be, but I don't want to tap that down if he says no, you know, try to get it straighter or something along those lines. So, uh, the odd thing is, while this doesn't glide, like, this on the driver's side just drops down, you know, all as far as it will and comes up. Uh, this is going to have to be love tapped into position, but uh, I can tell you right now, if I... Let me zoom you out so you can see this a little bit better. If I grab this, which is the piece of pipe that this passenger uh, header should connect to. This is a super long one, right? Uh, not the Y-bend. Check this out. The swaged in now that would just button up against it fits like a glove. So what's odd to me, I realize this is swage, but I would have thought that since I had them both in the spec that the V-band would drop down a little smoother. Not the case, it sits like this. If you're curious, I still really want to mock this up before I cut anything, but in theory, this is two inches, I should just cut right where this uh, swage end stops and kind of drops down. Weld the V-band here, and then these should mate up and it would be just like it is here. So essentially I'm eliminating these two inches and I'm just having it connect butt style uh, via the V-band. So. The Lyle Cone Shaper, was it a miracle worker? No. Did it turn out to benefit us in their one of two options? A little bit, but where it really shined, again, let me just show you so it kind of makes more sense. If we drop her down, okay, you can see where it's lining up. And you can obviously, you could come in and you could just beat the ever-loving snot out of this and bush that out a little bit, but see how there's sort of that gap right there? Well, it's very difficult for you to see but it's not flush, basically. Like if I had a feeler gauge, we could totally drop it in here. It wouldn't fit anywhere here, but starting here all the way around, I could actually insert you know, a couple thousandths or something. So what I do, that's because this is kind of kicked back at a very subtle angle, and you know, now it's more square, this is kicked back. I would hold this kicked back and hammer, and that would allow me to collapse the collector, and then the thing is, instead of just waffling it or crushing it, uh, since it sort of has like a die in position to sort of maintain some sort of concentricity. Granted, it's conical, but it's better than just, you know, squaring it out and then having to tap everything out. So it's just a rinse and repeat process. Again, I kind of was a little too cautious, I guess, in the beginning. Should have just gone to town hammering the snot out of it. Uh, live and learn, but I would, again, always prefer to be on the side of caution. So that's what we did. And the main thing, this saga is complete. This deal here... Um, if we ever need it, you know, typically it's going to be, like I said, you know, this is bushed out. You know, it's like crushed in from UPS or freight damage. So you would put this in, it would have a kink, you would just hammer it out, and as this goes down, it's going to push that back into place. This will be awesome, because like I said, 90-95% of the issues you're going to have with an exhaust system 
uh, or even tubing if you're going to build yourself is it's going to come and it's going to be crushed. It's very rare with anything pre-made that you're going to have a deal like I did where it's like, oh man, you know, this is too big on the OD. I need to crush it in. If that happens, I can use this and I'll try it, although I don't know that it will work, but I will have it as a weapon at my disposal. And then last but not least, and something they don't advertise, is just putting this into position and then we can make do kind of working it by hand, sort of just eyeball it, if you will. So it's a little archaic, but it is what it is. <laughs> and uh, I think it'll come out quite nice for us. So with that said, I guess that sort of wraps up the review on this little Lyle uh, reshaper. Uh, if you do this type of work a lot, if it works one time for you, you know, in terms of reshaping something, especially important like a collector, if this was just to run a pipe, go buy a new pipe, save yourself some time, right? Uh, if it's something that's like preformed, like a tailpipe for your exhaust system, you can probably work it, but if it's something that's expensive to replace, you know, like a full-on long tube header, that's when you're like in a salvage mode, right? And so 33 bucks in the broader scope of things, kind of a worthwhile deal. Again, I'm sure the guy that's going to TIG weld would have, uh, you know, been able to do this. I don't know what he would have charged. Now I don't have to find out because I did it myself. And uh, if it was anything over 33 bucks, hey, we save. Came out on top this time, so... With that said, you may see this again, maybe if I ever upload like some random stuff from around the shop, maybe I'll just throw this on the belt sander, uh, bring it down, smooth it out real nice, oil her up, something like that. Who knows, it'll be a project for a rainy day. Right now there's way more important things to do, so we're going to focus on this. But uh, yeah, I like I said, there's nothing on the internet about this thing. It's very possible if you had a situation again where it was like dimpled in, which you're usually going to have, this might have been just like the bee's knees. Uh, best case scenario, if you get a totally mangled exhaust system sent to you, you get to spend five minutes with this and be back in business. It'd be awesome. For people like me, um, just honestly working with it at this position, and again, that's going to cover pretty decent wide range of exhaust systems, maybe some smaller tubing for fabrication. Uh, so fairly versatile. I don't think we got ripped off. It wasn't the miracle I had hoped for, but it did help me get the job done. So uh, all in all, can't be too upset. So uh, with that said, I believe that's all she wrote here. Again, if you want to see me clean this thing up and do something with it, tell me. We'll make it more of a priority. Otherwise, it'll be something that may show up in the future. Uh, this is not perfectly round, but it's good enough for the slip joint. It's also good enough for me to love tap the V-band. I had it really, really round, and then what I did that was super stupid, uh, I was like, you know, that V-band isn't sliding down all the way like it is on the driver's side. I'm just going to go ahead and work this a little farther back. And as soon as I started doing that, boom, we lost the shape I'd created, and I was like, you know what, screw it. I don't care. The V-band doesn't need to slide up and down. It just needs to go right here at the edge. So that's what we went with. Uh, that said, it is after 11. I thought I brought water out here. I didn't. It's been stupid hot. My apologies if you hear the fan. Uh, it's just, I can't have the door up. There's already like giant, like <laughs> subtropical looking uh, beetles or something I had to kill a couple of earlier. Uh, there's spiders crawling around. It's, it's just a weird deal. I've got frogs that came in the shop last night. I had to put the door down. I uh, scared the snot out of me. That's actually why I ended the night. I One, didn't realize it was that late, and two, uh, I thought it was a snake coming in at first. It just kind of, I heard something rustling in the rocks, and then uh, I caught a glimpse of something sort of like a green tan, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> you know, grabbed the hammer ready to strike, and I'm like, oh, it's a frog. So uh, Then, of course, he went under the charger. I got him out of there, and then, of course, he went under the truck, and I swept him out from there, slammed the door down, and... Uh, that was about that night, so that's it. I will uh, finish getting these prepped. If you want to see these TIG welded with the V-bands, that will be in the RAM Revival. You can check that out. And uh, on that note, I'm going to wrap it up, get inside, uh, I guess have myself a good rest of what's left of the Saturday night, maybe have like 20, 30 minutes or so. And I uh, hope you enjoyed. Maybe you learned a little something. If you've used this, what are your results? What are you using for? Does it work well with what you're trying to do? Was it kind of a waste of money? Uh, was it sort of like my experience? It doesn't work miracles, but if you're patient, you can sort of make stuff happen. That's probably most people's experience. So let me know your thoughts. Again, that'll be very helpful to people that are looking for information on this, wanting to investigate it before they just throw $30 to the wind. But uh, all in all, 
I think uh, I think it'll come in handy. Hopefully we don't have to use it, but if we need it, it's here and we kind of know what to do now. So uh, I'll call that good. I'm going to get this mess cleaned up, head in. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this helps you out, entertains you to some degree. The website is LoneStarMopars.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. Uh, again, if you like what you see, I encourage you to leave a like. You can also subscribe if you like other things on the channel. New videos typically every Wednesday and Saturday at 9 a.m. But uh, on that note, have yourself a fantastic weekend. I'll catch you back here for more action on the show.